Uh, thanks everybody for joining. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, journalist proofs and getting practical when they are getting practical nowadays. So and over so I am Avradeep, and over here with me we have Mike, who is also present in the session. So in this talk, we're we're going to cover the following. So we'll give a very high level introduction on what are journalist proofs and we also see that that the slight difference between proof of statement versus knowledge and the difference between interactive proofs and non-interactive proofs how and how they can interactive ones can be con uh, converted to the non-interactive ones then we will talk about different journalist frameworks and their adaptations in practice such as snarks bullet proofs tarks plonks etc and lastly, uh, we'll say talk of the, the state of the current journalism implementation in Hyperledger. So this is a classic example of journalist groups is Alibaba Cave. So we have the Peggy, who, which, who is the prover. And she wants to prove to Victor, who is the verifier, that she knows a secret passphrase to open a magic door. Uh, but Peggy doesn't want to reveal any information about the passphrase. So here we have the cave. Uh, so in the cave, so at first the Peggy enters the cave. So in the cave, it's like a, the door is in the end, and you can the, you can reach the door either through A or through through path A or through path B. And initially, uh, the victor. The verifier Victor is out stands outside, and Peggy enters, and he, and she randomly chooses uh, one of the paths. And once she reaches the door, at that time, the Victor enters the, the entrance of the cave, and from there she tells Pe Peggy to come back by taking one of the paths, either A or B, and he chooses it randomly. And then, if Peggy actually knows the uh, the, she can, can utter her passphrase. The door will open, and then she can uh, come back using a the path. A. And so Peggy can also get uh, get lucky that Victor will say the path B, and she, Peggy was here, and she in that case she doesn't need to know the passphrase, and she can come back. But this protocol can be re can be repeated many times, and if Peggy succeeds succeeds at every iteration, then Victor gets really convinced that Peggy actually knows the passphrase. And uh, he, he the Victor also do, doesn't really get to know the the passphrase because uh, he cannot hear what Peggy is saying. So the previous protocol was uh, non-interactive. The previous protocol is actually interactive. But in a real life scenario, the if we can have a non-interactive non journalist proof, that is much more helpful. In case of non-interactive proofs, there is no need of interaction between the prover and the verifier. The prover computes a proof and sends the proof to verifier. And verifier then uh, verifies the proof and convinces itself about the prover's claim. And any inter interactive zero knowledge protocol can can be made non-interactive using Fiat-Shamir heuristic that actually uses a hash function as a random oracle. And what it essentially does is whenever the prover, sorry, the uh, verifier sends some random challenge, the uh, Prover can actually simulate those challenges using the random oracle. So now we have a little bit more math mathematical formal definition of zero knowledge. So here, suppose the error is an NP language. That means for if there is any X in error, then there, there exists some witness W such that. XW belongs to the input relation R. 
So the if you recall, the property of NP is given the uh, language uh, element X and the witness W. It is easy to verify whether the XW actually belongs to the relation. Uh, however, if uh, if it is if some if you are given only the only X, then finding the witness becomes very difficult. And in this case, we want to the prover wants to prove that the statement X is actually actually belongs to the language, and he knows the he or she knows the witness W. And using this witness W, he can uh, create the proof uh, pi x. And using the proof pi x, the verifier can convince itself that x actually belongs to the language L. But the zero knowledge property guarantees that this pi doesn't leak any information about W. And to implement these zero knowledge protocols, uh, we, in many cases, we also have a common reference string CRS which are generated by some tr tr trusted en entity. And there is also, so this is the regular general, general knowledge. And there is also proof of knowledge that is important in many applications. And in case of proof, proof of knowledge, the very first convinces says that not only that X belongs to the relation, that prover also knows the witness W. And again, as usual, the verifier does not get any information about W. Now, uh, the zero knowledge protocols uh, where the existence of, zero of the in, or, or for all in relations were invented long time back in uh, early in, in the 90s. However, the, the, they become practical recently with the advent of zk snarks. So the zk snarks are zero knowledge succinct non of the, of the knowledge, and they are based on strong number theoretic cryptographic assumption, which are non-falsifiable. And this is actually the first practical zero knowledge framework that can handle uh, pretty much any arbitrary computation. However, as you can see on the left-hand follow chart. Uh, writing a ZK, uh, developing a ZK, ZK for framework is not easy. It has it goes through many steps. So the first step you have the computation circuit, the actual computation uh, you want to perform, and from that you need to create an al algebraic circuit, and that becomes that gets converted to R1CS, which is rank one constant system. And after that you have that get co co converted to uh, QAP, which are called quadratic arithmetic pro programs. And then you have linear PCPs or probabilistic checkable proofs. And that becomes linear interactive proofs. And then finally, you can have the non interactive ZK snark. But we have the ZK snark framework that can handle almost everything. For the end user, we don't need to know all the details. So LibSnark is the presented the, the, the de facto ZK snark library. It is written in C++, C++, and it is actually probably the most feature complete zero knowledge library available. And it supports many formats such as R1CS, uh, BSCS, USCS, TBCS, etc. And you can also write arbitrary C code, and that can be compiled to TinyRAM format. Uh, which is supported by uh, LibSnark. And it also helps the gadget libraries that help building R1CS circuits. And you could, there are also choice of different elliptic curves. And um, it implements the original GK snark paper, as well as the newer growth 16 paper, which is slightly faster, but requires stronger, stronger generic group assumptions. We also have the other ZK snark libraries, such as Bellman, uh, which is a popular ZK snark implementation in Rust, and it supports Roth system. And this is actually getting used in Zcash. And then there are um, Zocrates. So, so Zocrates is a, a ZK snark toolbox on Ethereum blockchain. 
and it has a it kind of gives a high level non turing complete language that simplifies the circuit specifications because if you are go in if you are using bellman or uh lipsnart you pretty much have to deal with the r1cs circuits and this library is also written in rust and it supports Bell and bellman and lipsnart and as the backend and there is also gnark which is a fast fast zika snark library written in go this also offers some very high level apis and there are also others gsnark snarky etc so before going into various film the other uh, frameworks uh, we just uh, this slide it explains how the zero knowledge frameworks works at a high level so they usually have two components. Uh, one is front end, and there is another is back end. So they are kind of the separate parts of the framework. So the front end takes a high level statement, and it also takes a high level witness. And then, uh, uh, and the uh, syntax of these things depends on the uh, actual front end framework. And they also can use the gadgets to help uh, to help the end user to specify the statements. And then in the back end, it takes very specific type of, of uh, formats, either R1CS or arithmetic circuit or Boolean circuits. And this back end text takes this low level statement that witnesses. And this actually has the actual core crypto and they generate the proof. And then in, in, in the uh, verifier, it again takes the low level statements and low level, low level statements as well as the proof. It doesn't take the witness. The witness is the private that is used by the prover. And then it verifies the proof. So we won't, I don't go into the details on what exactly is rank one constant system, but essentially there are some uh, they can be specified by some matrices and some it is just ensure there exists a witness such that this condition holds and the but what is important about the r1cs this is a, a np np complete uh, language so anything in almost anything that we're interested in doing can be uh, represented in this uh, r1cs format Now, in terms of the application, so Zcash is the, I guess most of you know about what is Zcash. This is the similar to Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency is similar to Bitcoin, but it enhances the privacy guarantees. And essentially, it ensures that the wallet address can be shielded if the user, user wants. And only visible info would be the transaction timestamp. However, there are heuristic attacks because of small number of shielded transactions. But in this talk, we don't, we won't, we, are, we won't go into the, into that. But uh, what's important that it has option of selective disclosures for our auditing purposes. And previous version of Zcash used Livesnack, and then I think from 2018 they moved to Bellman and now and which supports the Roth 16 proofing systems and implemented in Rust. And one thing that is a kind of a drawback of SNARKs is that, that they require a trusted parameter generation at the setup phase. And to achieve the distributed trust, the Zcash generates the public parameters with the MPCC. Well, that's mostly mostly, right? Not all SNARKs require trusted setups, but, but a lot of them do. Yes, exactly. And uh, uh, I mean, not all zero knowledge framework uh, 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 this requires this uh, this trusted set setup, but the lib snark uh, like the uh, snark. So we we'll that uh, there are the other frameworks that do that do not such as bulletproof and snarks. But Zcash is using this uh, snarks and from Bellman, and it requires the trusted setup. And to achieve this trusted setup, they are doing this MPC 
ceremonies and it guarantees that as long as one of the participant is honest the generated parameters can be trusted and the first set of parameters were generated in 2016 and then they moved to growth 16 and and use bellman and that required in a new set of parameters and those parameters were generated in 2018 and both of them when both the cases they were performed through elaborate mpc ceremonies and the next the second one for the first one it was kind of restrictive because all the participants needed to be online at the same time However, for the second one, it, it was a more advanced protocol where anybody can join and leave the ceremony from whenever they want, and it can be done in a sequential manner. Do MPC. <laughs> yes, exactly. MPC is tough. And, but on the other hand, so one advantage for them was even though regular it's not they require new so like a, a a setup whenever you want to prove you want a, a new statement but for zcash what they did they included something called a universal circuit so for that so what the advantage was that then once they are doing it they can do it only once and then that would be good enough for a long time unless they are changing the protocol However, we have now we have a new advanced uh, proof system called bulletproof. And advantage, the main advantage of selling point of this one is it doesn't require the trusted the setup. And also the security is based on more standard district uh, the discrete log based assumption as opposed to very fancy assumption that is required for LibSnark. And for range proofs, which are required required for validity of confidential transactions, they are actually super efficient, and both in terms of proof size and the verification time. Uh, however, for arbitrary circuit, the verification time is high, uh, and but the proof size is really still uh, remains relatively small. And the advantage is the setup is trusted and the CPU depends on the standard assumption. And the direct the direct cryptography maintains a bulletproof library that is implemented in pure Rust. And actually, we also have a bulletproof implementation in Hyperledger Ursa at present. And Monero is the first cryptocurrency that adapted the uh, bulletproof. It is a private digital currency where transactions are confidential and untraceable. It, it uses one-time addresses and ring signatures, ring signatures and ring confidential transactions. And with bulletproof adaptation, Monero reported 80% reduction in the transaction fees. This was due to the reduction in the proof size as well as the verification time. And Monero source code includes the bulletproof implementation from scratch in C++ for ring confidential transaction treatment. Because it was so practical, these right? Yeah, I mean, bulletproof yeah. search. I mean, it was a huge improvement. Even though this was a bit experimental when I think they started implementing it, but I think they just went ahead because of the thing. The paper was well received as well as there. So they were seeing huge improvement. Yeah. Um, so we've got 10 minutes left. OK, you. maybe I should go quickly for the rest. So and maybe I should try to finish with by five, five more minutes, and then we have five minutes for questions. So there are also, so one of the disadvantage of the uh, SNARK was the, this, the setup required to the, the trusted setup. And, and that now we have the plonks which are kind of uh, improvements of a snarks where the setup is universal and updatable. And it also relies on very stand, uh, much easier uh, crypto assumptions called uh, Kate commitments. And then you also have ZK Stark and they are kind of a, 
they are snarks which have the complete trusted setup. So similar to uh, bullet proofs, and uh, it a uh, it, it has a clip track as the current C++ impl impl implementation and there is also a, a, a language called K Cairo for pro that uh, produces the pro production get grid uh, stocks. Uh, so why they are important we'll see shortly because they are getting used in the Ethereum ZK rollups. So these ZK rollups are the solution that perform transaction execution outside the main Ethereum chain. Uh, but then they post the transaction data on layer one, so actual chain. Essentially, they, they prove they post the the, the the zero knowledge proof that everything is fine. And currently, there are multiple implementation of of zk rollups, and they are using different this advanced crypto the crypto frameworks. So one of them is Loopring. This is snark based, and it uses uh, libsnark as backend and it's snark as front end. And then we have the Starknet by Starkware. This is, this is based on Starks that we just talked about. And it uses Cairo. This is, a, as, as a result, this is completely permissionless. So the one thing that you might think that why you cannot use Bulletproof over here, that is because in case of Bulletproof, the, very, the Bulletproofs are really efficient for range proofs. But for so they are uh, fine when you are just doing pure just transactions. But in case of Ethereum, we are we are kind of we want to prove something more. We want to run the smart contracts, and we have a, we kind of need a more feature complete language. So for that, bullet proofs are not so good because of the large verification times, and that's where the stocks come into play. And then we have the zk sync. This uses the Plonk snark. So the and this doesn't require the app specific trusted setup and and they, they are similar to Snark, so that's why this is faster verification than Starks. And there, there is also Aztec 2.0. This uses more advanced plonks. Uh, and then there is Hermes and ZK tubes. They are also based on ZK Snarks and plonks. Now coming to Hyperledger in the, in the hyper, Hyperledger. So we have the ZK, ZK uh, proofs so in the Hyperledger Indy as well as Hyperledger Fabric. And they are using uh, IDE Mix. So IDE Mix is a crypto cryptography protocol that provides strong authentication as well as anonymity and un unlinkability. However, this doesn't actually use the general purpose uh, framework. It uses specialized signature schemes. And as a result, they are very efficient, and they are you can implement it from the very standard assumptions. And so, Indy also uses the animation credential, which require proving the knowledge of signature, similar to IDMX. And Ursa is a Raspberry shared crypto library. It currently supports signature proofs of knowledge, the bullet proofs, range proofs, and set membership via cryptography. Accumulators and the Woods of Bulletproof implementation is a bit different than the, the Dalek one, uh, which is uh, uh, which was not supporting the pairing friendly, friendly cards. And there is a, there's a in addition, the hyperledger fabric also supports the general asset transfer. And this is also this also doesn't require the general purpose framework and can be built using the knowledge of signature schemes. And in conclusion, so knowledge proofs have come a long way since their inception in 1985. There are multiple uh, practical knowledge frameworks that support general purpose uh, input relations. And these new protocols based on fancy crypto are seeing rapid adaptation to practice because of their application to blockchain. And there are also GKP schemes used in practice that are using standard assumptions. I think with that, I will go to any questions.
So where I generally see the being practical and applied is not just in blockchains, although that's where they're heavily used right now. It's with anything you want, kind of like custom circuits that you want to create. Basically, I want to be able to prove something to you without revealing what the inputs were. Just I want to be able to prove a statement is valid. And that's starting to become more and more practic practical in these cases. So you can see there's a whole bunch of different schemes that you can pick to do that. And we're just showing you the ones that are the most practical today. Yeah, so I think that Jason over here has some interesting questions. So one of the, I think he is asking about the implementation question so how do you transform a generic generic question to the to zkp language that we have all the input variables and functions we're running yeah so i think for that so one option is using this feature complete uh, so almost during complete complete uh, zero knowledge languages and in fact if you want to use the Lib snark I think you, you can write your program in C, C and it will compile the C program to a tiny RAM format that is supported by the Lib snark But if you know more about the program, it is always better if you can write it in a more high level language that is supported by the framework. Yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking, let me just share my screen. So, um, so I just wanted to reiterate one thing. So, as I'm doing this today, uh, Jason's question uh, about the way transform in general this, functions uh, is decaying. Like process in general with the uh, the event planners, there are a few things that the dashboard or the filters have. Probably the best thing, um, so for example, is, uh, trying to break things down into what you're actually trying to do. So, with the thing to keep in mind with SNARKs or any of these base languages is you have what are called private inputs and public inputs. The public inputs are basically known to all parties, usually. And the private inputs are only known to the prover. So I like to break it down into that form. Okay, what does only the prover know? What does everybody else know? And then what is the exact statement we're trying to prove and kind of make it true or false statements? Once we can get it to that point, then we can kind of compose a circuit and what you call, I guess, encode and verify. Um, but that, that's how I start breaking it down. I don't know if that helps, but that's how I think of it. <laughs> Let's see. Dan has a question on the way back. It says, does Indy with CL signatures use URSA to implement range proofs, predicate proofs? Yes. So... Because seal signatures are RSA based, they don't have to use any bulletproofs or any of these snarks. But the downside is the, the range proofs are large, like four kilobytes. So they're quite large and they're expensive compared to say bulletproofs. So which library is appropriate when we introduce range proofs to BBS plus? I would say bulletproofs. I know there's some research um, right now by the inventors of bulletproofs that if you are going to use pairings, there might be ways to also make bulletproofs even more efficient during verification by the use of pairings. So that's what I would recommend. Snarks and Starks are more for kind of general purpose statements, but if we just want range proofs, bulletproofs were designed just for that purpose. See, that's all the questions I can see.
<laughs> Here's one by Rob, Robert Everdeep, if you want to answer it. What about a Monero-style voting system, which the coins are issued by a governing body to a wallet, and then the vote coin can be spent into a candidate wallet without revealing the citizen identity? I'm not sure if that would work. Because the thing is, voting, as far as I understand, it has different rules about uh, based on countries. Like at least in the United States, um, you don't get to know who casts the vote, but you also have to make sure that if I vote that um, they know it was me that voted, but they don't know who I voted for and that I can't double spend. So I guess that's why a lot of people think I don't think the logic is in here. Yeah, I guess, yes, I mean, some properties a, would hold that you would want in a secure voting, voting system, but I think there, there are some fundamental difference between voting and There's what you want in the transactions. There is some similarity and you can do, achieve those things. But for example, we want Probably the there should be a, if somebody outside uh, other than the like the general public should be able to see that sure. as a overall the aggregate vo voting is fine. There should be a zero knowledge proof of that one. So I guess for that we need to go to actual electric electric yes, voting scheme. Here, yeah. 